Um, I just want to take us through the construction process as stated earlier. Let's get started. Okay, this is our box. We are supposed to create a rectangle paper or box as you can see. And then um, you can, the measurement, this is, these are the measurements I am using. The bust, the waist, the hip, across chest, across back, the shoulder, length to waist, bust point, on the bust, bust width, and on the bust circumference. And these are the proportions corresponding to my bust size. You have this in the um, measurement book that I shared with you earlier. So you have to select the proportions that correspond to your bust size. So, as you can see, I have divided my bust, my waist, my hip, across chest, across back by two and by four, and I have written them down. It is important you do that and have them written down so that you can just pick those figures while you're doing your constructions. Now to the creation of the box. The formula says the length should be 75 centimeters long. The length should be 75 centimeters, which is constant. And the width should be half bust plus five or half hip plus three whichever is larger so let's go back to our construction uh, measurements the formula says half bust plus five or half hip plus three from this measurement the half bust the half hip is larger than the half bust so the formula for this client to construct the table for this client will be half hip plus three for the width of our box while the length remains 75 centimeters and the 75 centimeters is constant for everybody no we cannot finish no one can finish the length but the width our bust measurement or hip measurement will determine whichever one we are going to be using so for this person i'm using half hip plus three centimeters and the three centimeters is the ease. So now, our half hip is 47.5 plus three, that is 50.5. I had to erase it. It was there, if you go through your step-by-step um, -step constructions, you would have seen it there. It was there, but I had to erase it so that I can, I'll be able to write other things on, on the top. And once we do our sense five centimeters, then half e plus three, 75 centimeters, half e plus three, we'll have to close the box. So the next thing to do is from our proportions, we need to mark out the point O. And for this um, client, our point O is in three centimeters. So I have marked three centimeters from the edge of the paper down. And that's our point O. And from point O, you mark the shoulder line, which is three, and the three is constant. It's a fixed figure for all sizes. You mark three, we mark 21, which is the bust line. We mark back line, which is half of, from, from here, from point O, to bust line, you divide it by two, you have 10.5 for your back line. I'll say that again. Your back line is from point O to bust line divided by two. So from point O to bust line is 21 centimeters. 21 centimeters divided by two will give you 10.5 and that's your back line. In a situation where we have our bust line to be 20, let's say for instance, 21.5 you need to round it up to a whole figure first to be 22 then you divide by 2 and that your back line will be 11 this is so in because we do not want to deal with fractions 
So you need to run your 21.5 to 22 centimeters first and divide by two, and that gives you 11 for your back line. Again, from point O, we'll do all these measurements, our waistline measurement. Our waistline measurement is the same thing as our leg to waist. That's the measurement we took while we put our measurements on the, well, our measuring tape at the neck through to the deepest part in our back. So that's that. And the hip line is 22 centimeters down the waistline. And that's why I've written the 22, um, drawn the arrow showing that it's 22 centimeters from here down. And that gives you 60 centimeters. So from, the, from all of these points, your shoulder line, back line, bust line, waist line, and hip line, you rule across. But you only rule the bust line, waist line, hip line, across to the center front. This is because these three lines are common to both front and back. We, we have waistline in front and back, we have hip line in front and back, and we will have bust line in front and back. And that's why we have to rule these three lines, the bust line, the waistline, and the hip line right to the center front. The back line and the shoulder line, you rule less than half way to see it. That's why it's stopped here, less than half, or you can just rule half way. And the neckline should be between 10 to 12 centimeters long. Okay, the next thing is to mark our neck width, the back neck width, which is the measurement in your proportions. Your back neck width is under the proportions. And once you've written out your corresponding proportions according to your bust size, then it's easier for you to be picking those figures. So the neck width is seven centimeters for this client. And you, you measure the neck width from point O, which is seven, and rule two centimeters up from seven centimeters. And that gives you the NP, which is the neck point, the back neck point. So from the back neck point, you use your French curl to draw a curve that's the neckline curve to point O on the CB line. The next thing is, from on your shoulder line, you measure half across back. For this client, it is our cross back is 38. So half across back is 19. So you measure half across back, half across back on the back line as well, then half across back on the bust line. Then you draw a vertical line through those points. I'll say that again. On the bust line, draw half across back, mark half across back, which is 19. And you can come down to the bust line as well and mark 19. You can see I, I wrote the 19 here and there. Then draw a vertical line through those points, like so. This is the vertical line like that that is the guideline for drawing our back hand hole so it's a very important line okay from the bust line from that line on the bust line you measure your back up also your back up is under the proportions and for those clients it's fine so from here from the 19 point, you measure five and you write your UP, that's your back UP. Also on the shoulder, from this point, from the armhole guideline, you measure two centimeters beyond it and you call it your SP, your shoulder point. The points on the armhole, on, the, on our shoulder here, the bone here, that's our shoulder point. You've already seen it in, um, I mentioned it in the step-by-step -step pictures okay then we we'll draw uh, from your back line from the back line measure point out three centimeters that's also a guideline for drawing our arm o in constructions generally when you're drawing when you're constructing you need to create guidelines 
for yourself in order for you to get accurate drawings and rulings in your in whatever you're constructing same thing applies when you're sewing when you're sewing you should always create guidelines for yourself say for instance you want to sew a straight line you can use the foot of your machine to guide you you, you make sure the foot doesn't go beyond certain position and I'm very sure you're going to and at the end of the day you have a smooth and straight lines always create guidelines whenever you're constructing or sewing it helps a lot so back to this now we have our, our markings we have the back up we have our sp we have we also have our three centimeters marked down below back line the next thing is to draw the arm o then you place your ruler and draw the arm o the way i shared it in the the step-by-step -step pictures then you join np to sp and this is your shoulder line that's your shoulder seam this from np to sp is your shoulder seam the part where you seam together front and back so and uh, the next thing is to mark her shoulder that's on the back and this is how to go about that. For this client, our shoulder measurement is 14. So the formula to um, getting the shoulder, the middle dart line is, you measure half of the shoulder measurement from NP. Since the shoulder measurement is 14, so from NP you measure 7 centimeters, you mark it. Also from SP you measure same 7 centimeters and you mark it. The space between those two markings is your dart intake. So you just look and find the out of um, the two points. Place your ruler and rule a straight line down. The line should be um, between eight and nine centimeters. Then you finish your dart as I've um, shared in the step-by-step -step pictures. Another thing I would like to say here, the two centimeters beyond the, uh, the sh on the shoulder line for the SP. Sometimes when you draw your NP to SP line, your that uh, the any X, sometimes you won't have any excess. It will be your exact shoulder measurement, and sometimes you have um, an average between an average of 1.5 centimeters, one and 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters extra. But once it's beyond that average um, measurement stated for your dart intake, you can move your SP. I've done that for some clients and it's just perfect on them because their NP to SP is too, the excess to be taken in as that is too much, say five centimeters, which is a lot when you because it's a small dart you have to be very careful when you're drawing um, a small dart the small darts they don't usually taper off neatly so you need to be very careful if you can reduce them fine if you cannot reduce them that means you have to lengthen the dart so that you, it can taper off well so this sp this two centimeters can be moved backward but it has to be still have to be on the shoulder line you can't change the position of sp it still has to be on the shoulder line so you can move it backward or forward as as, as the case may be so that's that on that so we come to the if so from point from cb you measure your quarter if measurement and point it out you remember when we drafted uh, when we created this box it was half it was half a plus three that three is is for to allow um, free movement that three centimeters can be shared between back and front the is but in this case in this construction i've given the all three centimeters to the front um pattern what i'm trying to say is Quarter hip measurement and quarter hip measurement will give you half hip. Then plus the three centimeter is that we created the box with. The three centimeter is can be shared between the back and the front. 
you have to look at your client very well and see and and um if your line up to hp is too slanted then you have to adjust that i'll share a book with us that you can download online and you can read more about that okay now let's get back to our construction so after pointing out the quarter eight measurement which is air 23.75 then the next thing is to rule a straight line from up to hp which is this straight line can you see this straight line and that's our side seam. It's a straight side seam. And because we are not straight on our side seam, we are curvy, we need to go two centimeters in from that point, from that straight line on the waist. We'll go two centimeters in, and that's the two, and we call it WP. That's our waist point. That's the curvy part on our waist. So that's the, um, the, the that's that on the back construction. We'll move now to the front. This um, waist shaping is the last thing we'll be doing. So now let's move to front. Okay, now to the front, which I've given six centimeters. I've given one point five centimeter to the side seam remember we can only give lead to the largest part share should go to the middle that in front under the bust and the middle that at the back below the shoulder blade so i've given my standard cf as well one centimeter which can take lead to amounts like i showed you earlier on if you take it up it adds it automatically adds to your neckline which if it's a smaller amount you can still ease it in if you are doing a basic neckline, but if you're bringing down your neckline, then this can, it will definitely go out of the way, so you don't, you dealt with it that way. So, like um, we did, when we were doing this boss line, for my client, I have measured 9.5, remember? We have to measure the same thing on here, because that determines our princess line. The line has to run from the shoulder through our boss point, then to the M. So they have to be, the boss that and the waist that have to be on the same line so i've marked my 9.5 then from the lower waist you go 13 centimeters up and 15 centimeters below then i've given the set the middle that 3.5 centimeters 1.75 to the left 1.75 to the right of the middle that line then you finish your dart like so you draw it like this like that like that and that ends our waist shaping and basic bodies block. I'll be showing you how to get this, the, our final dart, because this is not our final shoulder. From MP to SP, I'll be showing you on paper. There's a way we have to fold, which I will show you on the paper now. Thanks for watching and Bye for now.